Hi, I'm John DeVore. Welcome to the channel. Today's a record review, although I am not going to recommend a specific record. I just want to talk about a piece of music. And this one we are going in the way back machine uh, in two ways. In one way in my life and in another way we're going back to someone who was born in the 1600s. Bach's musical legacy is so enormous and his body of work is so enormous <laughs> oh no I'm using the same words again that it's that I decided that I was gonna break it up into several videos the first one was inspired just this morning I was driving my son Leo to get an eye checkup an eye exam and Bach's Brandenburg Concerto number no. three came on the radio and instantly I was transported I knew every single beat and every single note and every single counterpoint and harmony uh, and that's because this is one of the very very first songs that I ever learned uh, from a recording. When I was a little kid the first three records that I remember owning one was a 45 of Cannibal Adderley, one was an LP of music from the Banana Splits show, <laughs> And the third was Switched On Bach, which is Walter Carlos. He was Walter then. Now she's Wendy, if she's still alive. She was Wendy at the end of her life. So Wendy Carlos was a true master of the Moog synthesizer. And the early Moog was a gigantic wall-sized panel of a billion knobs and switches and essentially you were modulating sine waves into different sounds, completely manual. Not a digital synthesizer, this was a purely analog synthesizer. And she did a transcription, a, a pretty legendary transcription of a lot of Bach pieces, including Brandenburg number no. three, uh, the orchestral suite, uh, air on a G string, a, a lot of different pieces, a lot of the real iconic pieces from the Bach musical canon. And I played the crap out of that record. Uh, I played the crap out of all those, all three of those records, and I know them better than any other pieces of music because of that. Uh, because I was so young, so formative, because I heard them so many times, and because they were really meaningful to me. They were interesting and great pieces of music. My mother was a, a classical pianist, and she played a lot of Bach in the house. She often played Bach to relax or to warm up or to try to get into the mood to work on a more difficult piece uh, that she had to work on to perform. So Bach really was a very meaningful thing in our house growing up. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about Bra Bach's Brandenburg number no. three. But before I get into that, a little bit more about who Bach was and why anyone should give a damn. Uh, as I said, Bach was born in the 1600s. He died in the middle of the 1700s, I think 1750 exactly. Uh, he had approximately 1.5 billion children, um, many of which also wrote music, so it can be a little bit confusing if you just do a Google search for Bach music. There is a chance that you would get some music by one of his sons. But he was uh, incredibly important. I don't think there's any other classical composer whose music is more often performed by non-classical musicians. A lot of really good players who want to flex may play like I don't think I don't think there's any classical music that's been played more on an electric bass than Bach. I there's plenty of transcriptions obviously like the Wendy Carlos transcription for synthesizer lots of classical and electric guitar versions Bach has been woven into pop music and rock and uh, tons of jazz modern jazz quartet did blues on Bach which is a lot of uh, Bach pieces done in the MJQ style with Milt Jackson's exquisite vibes playing it's killer. Um, but I'm going to concentrate on proper classical performances of this. When I went off to college, I made a bunch of cassette tapes of music in my house that I didn't own, aka a bunch of my mom's records I recorded onto cassette. 
and one of those was the Bach Brandenburgs. For some reason, except for Brandenburg number one, we've got two, three, four, five, and six on here. So there are six Brandenburg concertos. A concerto is essentially, in a really loosely, it's an orchestral piece of music with a soloist or multiple soloists. Most commonly, you'll have a piano concerto where you've got a guy banging away on a piano in front of a big orchestra. Obviously, violin concertos. Um, you can have a concerto really with any instrument or a multiple of instruments. The Beethoven triple concerto, Brahms has an incredible double concerto. Some of Bach's concertos were even more than triple. So in the, in the Brandenburgs, there are two of them. The, the two most famous, number three and number six, use string instruments. The other ones, they might be horn or clarinet, things like that. And concerto number three is for multiple violins, violas, and cellos. And so it's essentially like a chamber music ensemble with an orchestral backup. Uh, and that makes for some really beautiful, really rich tonalities. Um, and the same can be said to a slightly lesser extent for number six. All of the Brandenburgs are fantastic. Three and six are the knockouts, in my opinion. This was a, this tape was made from the RCA Living Stereo with Charles Munch and the BSO, which is this. Um, another one that I have, I have another box uh, from Pablo Casals and Rudolf Serkin. These are both fantastic versions. Uh, surprisingly, not really that different and, and both good sounding. The other one I have is a little bit more of a modern take on it with Pickus Zuckerman and members of the LA Phil. Um, all three of these are, are great choices. The Zuckerman's is a little faster. The tempo is a little sped up. The thing about the third concerto and maybe one of the things that made it tempting for Wendy Carlos to include it in her synthesizer version is that it has this amazing forward momentum. So it's two movements. The first movement sounds like Bach sat down at his pianoforte to compose a piece of music and he could only think in 16th notes. It's literally the whole thing just cruises by on 16th notes. And it's, it's astonishing the variety of tonality and emotional content he can get with this absolutely sort of driving propulsive piece of music. And then the second movement is similar, but, but in three, four time. And so it, again, it just has this incredible uh, drive to it. And a great number of the things that make Bach so fundamental in Western music, a lot of them can be found in the Brandenburgs. One of the things that Bach really did was to modulate his compositions. When Bach was writing uh, music, instruments were far more primitive than they are now. And so modulating from one key to another was not really that easy. But Bach managed to bring modulation into these compositions in many very clever ways, using multiple instruments or by finessing so that critics of, of the time thought of them as kind of odd or wrong or uncomfortable notes. He was also one of the first to feature as soloists a lot of instruments that were really considered at the time to be accompanying instruments. So harpsichord, organ, organ would generally accompany a choir, harpsichord would accompany uh, a singer or some other string instrument, cello or viol de gamba, these kinds of instruments that tended never to get the spotlight. Bach wrote beautiful pieces. I mean, the Bach cho solo cello suites, a brilliant example. Again, some of the most brilliant music ever written. And it was revolutionary at the time, not just for its beauty and for its compositional elements, but also for the instruments that it was written for. And the other thing that really sort of set Bach apart and 
continues to do so today is his use of counterpoint and and his beautiful ability to run essentially multiple melodies over one another and have them weave together and form a whole that is far greater than any of the parts. And that's beautiful in, in the Brandenburg number three as well. Highly recommended. Uh, the Brandenburgs are a great way if, you, if you're if you intimidated by classic music, you don't really know a lot about it. Bach, number one, Bach is a great way in because his compositions are so perfect and they're so mathematically satisfying that you don't have to know anything about classical music to to understand their beauty and and their the magical qualities that they have it's not like a mozart you know mozart wrote equally sort of perfect music but at least in my opinion it doesn't have the profound grounding that bach has that's my opinion um i promise i'm definitely going to I will definitely make a few more Bach videos on some of, some of the other pieces that would be uh, easy to recommend as entree into classical music or just even entree into Bach music. Thank you for watching and I will see you at the next video.